everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be all about the Goodreads Choice Award. They just posted the winners. I thought it was supposed to be tomorrow. So we're doing this in my lunch break and I wanted to look if my predictions were right or wrong. And we're gonna talk about the books that I want to add on my TBR for next year because I like to do my own Goodreads Choice Award show a year later because between the time that they announce the nominees and the winners, there's like two weeks, there's no time to read more of the nominees before voting. And there's this whole converse, controversy of people voting for books they haven't read. So I just like to give myself a year and then I'll let you know which ones were actually worth it. I review all of them. I'll link the video I did for 2021, even though I said I wasn't doing it, I still did it. So, <laughs> so I haven't looked at the winners. I will live react to them. We're gonna see if I was right or wrong. And I'm gonna talk about the ones I want to read. By the way, if you see a cat going around, not my cat, uh, you'll see that in my reading vlog, my next one. Uh, this cat has been just trying to come in and this morning I gave up. I just let him do it. Okay, best fiction, the winner is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zevin, not surprised. I think I may have said that Jodi Piku would be the winner. Either way, I hadn't read any of these books, so it was kind of hard to predict anything. But I had started this one. I had received an advanced reader copy from NetGalley. Unfortunately, it was archived before I could finish it, but I do have my name on the waiting list for uh, the audiobook for my library. So I will be finishing it in 2023 and I'll be able to see if I like it or not. Fiction in general is not really my main genre, so I don't have that many of these on my TBR, so feel free to tell me to add some of them. Uh, I do own To Paradise, and shamefully, I bought it when it was released early 2022, and I still haven't picked it up. 2023. Uh, otherwise, some of the ones I've seen going around that I'm interested in picking up, I've been told multiple times to try Other Birds, so I might. I have seen Cleopatra and Frankenstein a lot, the cover. I just remember it, so I might pick that one up. I had noticed Remarkably Bright Creatures, which is about this woman who uh, starts working in an aquarium. I think she strikes a friendship with an octopus. I, listen, cover, cover read for me this. <laughs> just sounds appealing. The reviews are really positive, so I wanted to try it. And you know what? Just now I just looked and my library has it, so I put my name on the waiting list for the audiobook. Otherwise, normally I would want to try the new Celeste Ng, but the reviews haven't been really positive, so I might not, but again, feel free to convince me otherwise. Uh, next, Mystery Thriller. Which one is it? I remember predicting, I think it was the new Lucy Foley, like the apartment one in Paris. I said I wasn't going to read her books because I tried the guest list and hated it. So let's see. Oh, okay, The Maid, of course. <laughs> I said I was going to try it when it came out and everyone kept telling me it was awful. So I removed it from my library waiting list and now I have to put it back because it's the winner. So I'm gonna give it a shot. If I hate it, I'm gonna put it down. I'm not torturing myself, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, see, Lucy Foley is number two. I wasn't too far. Uh, I'm still not reading that one. One that I do want to read on that list is the third book in the Thursday Murder Club. I have read book one this year. So I'm gonna try book two. If I love it, I'll read book three and read, you know, the number three on this list. If I don't like it, I just won't. I read number four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's pretty good. And from the other ones, I have been meaning to read some Frida McFadden. I've seen her books going around, so I'm curious. The Housemaid, I'll definitely pick that up. And otherwise, from the other ones, I'm seeing uh, Things We Do in the Dark and The Family Game that I own physical copy of from uh, Book of the Month. So. I'll pick those up probably next year. And right there, I think I would read like half of the list. So I would be able to make a choice based on all of that. I hadn't, I, I had voted. Okay, I was like, I hadn't voted. I did. I had voted for wrong place, wrong time. I'm not super surprised it didn't win because it has only like 60,000 ratings at the moment compared to 225,000 for the maid. Often people just vote for the one that they've read, which totally fair, but... I think that if people had more time to pick up wrong place, wrong time, it would have won. I'm kind of surprised it's not higher though, but whatever. Okay, historical fiction. I don't think I voted for anything because I don't think I've read anything. It's not really my main genre. Uh, the winner is Taylor Jenkin Reads. That's the one I had, I think, predicted because she wins every time. I might pick it up. I might pick it up. There's nothing on this list that really calls my name, but I might try it. I might try it. Fantasy. Okay, that's the one that is usually one of my main genre. Although the last two, three years have been weird with fantasy and sci-fi in general. So let's see. Sarah J Mas won. Yeah, I mean, she always wins. Like even if people haven't read her book. Okay, I'm being a little about it, but yeah. 
Uh, second place is Babel. I didn't love the book 100%, but I'm not really surprised it was in second place. Oh, gosh. Okay. This is where I put my conspiracy hat. Um, it has 28,000 ratings, but 62,000 votes. While it's possible that people voted even though they didn't put it as red on Goodreads, it's always a bit suspicious, right? I don't mind it, though, because of her. If it was someone else, I <laughs> would. Third place is Fairy Tale by Stephen King. I've kind of given up on Stephen King because his endings always suck and like there's always weird sexual stuff. Which, um, is this one good? Let me know because I haven't tried really anything that is like fantasy by him. So I would be willing to try it if you tell me it's good. And fourth place, The Atlas Six. It wasn't good. My The one I had voted for, uh, Legends and Lattes, is an eighth place, which is pretty low, but... It wasn't, it hasn't been read that many times. I think once more people pick it up, it's going to be more popular. I'm surprised though that the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches is number seven because it was just, it was just okay. It was cute, but like it wasn't fantasy fantasy. Anyway, I'm being picky. Okay, so the ones that I am now adding to my TBR for 2023. We have Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which is in sixth place. I was interested. I feel like it's a little bit of a cover read for me. <laughs> it's so pretty. Uh, otherwise, Brendan Sanderson, The Lost Metal is in ninth position. It just came out. Again, conspiracy hat. Uh, at the moment, there's 11,000 ratings and there's 21,000 votes. Just saying. Uh, so yes, I will be reading it or finishing it. I've also been seeing, I don't know how you pronounce this, Kai Kaikei? I've seen good reviews, so I might pick that one up. Uh, when Women Were Dragons, that title and cover have been calling my name, so I will probably pick this up. Uh, Nettle and Bone is something a lot of people have been telling me to try, and I already have my name on the waiting list for the audiobook, so probably will pick that up soon. Otherwise, I do own a copy of Stardust Teeth, so that's kind of my list. I don't feel like there are that many, like fantasy fantasy on this list. Is it just me? I feel like, again, fantasy and sci-fi in the last two years, I've been weird. Let's look at the next one, which is romance. I had voted for Book Lovers, which was the only one I read. And that was my prediction for the winner because Emily Henry. It won. It won. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Uh, Colleen Hoover is in second and third place. Wow. Okay. Um, I thought she might win, but I didn't want her to. And I say that I haven't read anything by her, but you know. Otherwise, there's not really that many things on here that I know anything about. So if you have a favorite romance, let me know. I had heard, the only one I've really heard of is Delilah Green doesn't care. So I might pick that up. But let's go to sci-fi. Sci-fi, I forgot to mention, really complain about it when I was predicting and voting. Um, Becky Chambers, where is she? Hi, kitty. Do you want to come in? Did you hear the little meow? He's so adorable. Um, I have the laptop here. You can't go on my... Okay, fine. You can go on my lap. You're so cute. I can't tell. Okay. Um, yes. The second book in the Monk and Robot duology wasn't an option. Why? I would have easily voted for that one. That was the only book that was sci-fi that I read in 2022 and was published in 2022 that I gave five star to. So I had to vote for something else. No, don't do your nails on my freaking couch. You don't know. No. I love you, but not like that. If you do it again, I will push you off. I know you're cute though. I know. So yeah, I was really sad that she wasn't there because she should have won. But anyway, uh, best sci-fi, the winner is... Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mendel. Not surprised. Uh, she's not really for me. This is my second book by her. Her writing style just doesn't work for me. It's a bit too, like... I'm going to regret letting him inside this house. <sighs> Good thing he's cute. Um, so yeah, not surprised that it's the winner. It was not my vote. I have read it. Please don't destroy everything. I haven't owned a cat in forever. And now I remember, <laughs> Christmas trees and cats. Not a good combo. Yeah, now you're purring. Okay, okay. You're such a little poo-poo head. Don't do this. He's a black cat. Anyway, um, 
on that list of ones that I have been meaning to read, uh, How High We Go Into Dark. I've heard good things. Uh, in eighth position, Kaiju Preservation Society. I've been told so many times it's good. I just hauled it. And I've heard it like it's a really quick, fun sci-fi. So I will pick that up. The one I had voted for, because Becky Chambers wasn't there, is in ninth position, Dead Silence. That was a pretty good horror sci-fi. Um, what else do I want to read? Other than that, I only really have Station Eternity, which I wanted to read because I read Six Weeks by the author, and I enjoyed it, so I wanted to try something else. But the reviews are not... But the reviews haven't been super positive, so I don't know. So is it me, or just there's just not that many interesting sci-fi that came out last year? nor the year prior to this. I'm a little about it. Horror. Oh no. I was going to say, I don't think I read anything. I did. Hidden pictures. I hated the ending. Everyone has voted for this one. I hated the ending. I like the cover though, but no. Otherwise, I do own White Horse. And I've been meaning to read Our Wives Under the Sea, but I've seen the other cover. So it took me a second, but... Yeah, I'm not happy about that winner. <laughs> uh, best humor, I did not read any of them. Feel free to convince me to try some. Nonfiction, I'm actually really curious. I voted for A Taste for Poison, but it was not a well-known book, like, at all. But I've been raving about it a lot, so maybe some of you voted, but... Oh, gosh, I knew it. I knew it! Atlas of the Heart. I didn't hate the book. It just felt very, like, surface-level pop culture, which there's nothing wrong with that. It just, I didn't feel like it was great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's second to last. To be fair, there's only like 3,000 people that have rated it on Goodreads and there's 3,000 votes. So maybe people agree that it is good, just nobody has read it. Do read it. It's fun. It's a really good nonfiction. I do want to read The Song of the Cell because this author has written other books that Oh my god, again, conspiracy hat. Not even 700 people have rated it on Goodreads, but there's 3.5k votes. Again, it's possible some people didn't rate it, even though they have read it, but like 3,000 people? Anyway, uh, so I will be reading that. And I also recently added um, All the Living and the Dead because it's sounds really cool. My library had the audiobook. Uh, this is All the Living and the Dead from Embalmers to Executioners, an exploration of the people who have made death their life's work. Listen, a little gruesome, but I've been wanting to try more nonfiction, things that are different. And yeah, again, not that many on here that I'm that interested in, but feel free to convince me if I missed something that you think I would enjoy. Memoir and biography, I don't read a ton of those either, but I voted for, yeah, the one that won. I knew it. Um, I'm glad my mom died. Yes, it was a great book. I completely understand. Oof, second position is The Diaries of Alan Rickman. I still don't feel okay with that book being published. I will not be reading it. I don't think there's anything really on here that... Oh, yes, I do have What My Bones Know. I already had that on my library waiting list, so I will be reading this. History and Biography. I don't think I had voted for anything. Yeah, I don't think I've ever... I don't think I've even seen any of these anywhere, but I might read the winner. Uh, Bad Gaze, a homosexual history. I'll see if my library has it. If they don't, I will ask for the audiobook. Uh, next, debut novel. Okay, uh, Lessons in Mystery is the winner, Chemistry. <laughs> I haven't heard anything, but now that I'm reading the summary, it's about a successful chemist. You poo, -poo head. I'm sorry if the cat is annoying, but he's so adorable. He's just a little bit... Um, a sneaky little beast. Since it won, I will probably try it. That might be appealing. I'm not usually big on memoirs, but if it won, I'll try it. And I believe I have mentioned all the other ones on this list that I'm interested in. So there's quite a few, actually. Okay. Uh, and I think that's it. Young adult fiction. Is there anything? Wow. He's jumping everywhere. He's on the dresser right now to look, th <laughs> to look at the window. You silly poo poo head. What about young adult fantasy sci-fi? Oh, I have read Gallon, which I did think would be one of the higher ups with Bloodmarked, which I'm really surprised it didn't win. Uh, but I believe it just just came out. 
again, conspiracy hat. There's not even 7,000 ratings and there, there's over 37,000 votes. I don't think 30,000 people forgot to rate it or just didn't want to rate it. But I don't really mind that one. There's been this whole controversy about the book being hard to find and everything. So like, uh, I didn't really care for Gallon. So yeah, that's it. Let me just grab the cat because he's playing with the cookie jar and if he breaks it, I will be mad. Do you see how tiny he is? He's tiny, tiny, tiny. He also has, his eyes are way too close to each other. It's so funny. And he has huge paws. Can you look at the camera? You're not cooperating. Of course you can go. Of course you can go. Just not to play with the Christmas tree. <laughs> Gosh. I think I'm gonna go and throw him outside. Um, I'm definitely <laughs> closing the door to this room. I'm definitely leaving this room and closing the door though because he can't break the Christmas tree. It's dangerous for him. Now he's destroying my chair. I had forgotten all about that with cats. These are the books that I'm hoping to read next year. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about the winners. Did the books that you voted for win? Did they not? Uh, are you personally adding some books to your TBR next year? Let me know again if there's anything that I should add and I'm gonna go and take care of this little demon. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry if he distracted me the whole video, but he was adorable. So like, hopefully that wins some points too with you. And yeah, thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. I'm gonna go back to work now. <laughs>